Firepower Threat Defense 622, we're going to do Remote Access VPN. So this is going to have Active Directory and the device will have a self-signed certificate. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, it's wizard driven and we're going to have an outside host obviously VPNing in and then uh, connecting to an inside host. So we'll add new configuration. From here, the wizard pops up, and then we go through the steps. Um, before you, there on the the right side, you can see before you start. Um, there's a couple steps there that kind of highlight what what we need to do as we go through this process. At this point, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to select a device. Um, the nice thing about this, obviously, is it's central manager, right? Um, we can do multiple devices all at once. Here we're going to do uh, AAA only and we're going to add an Active Directory Realm and you can see f even though I didn't have one created it, uh, it pivoted me to uh, the screen to allow me to create that uh, element. Um, so here we'll, we're going to create um, that realm. It's uh, Cisco AD in this case um, is the name. Um, the domain is cisco.local and I'm using administrator to um, connect. Um, obviously, this is a lab environment. In production, you would use a uh, restricted user uh, where appropriate. And here we'll create the directory username and directory password. And again, I'm using administrator here. For the base DN, um, it's obviously LDAP. So uh, in our case, we're going to use the uh, root uh, domain controller uh, Cisco uh, and domain controller dot local or local. Um, and uh, this way we can uh, parse the entire uh, Active Directory tree. So we're good here, we'll hit OK. And then from here the, uh, the Realm uh, configuration comes up and now we can add our servers. In this case I only have one um, and we're going to use LDAP. So the default port there is good. We'll just do a quick test to make sure and that succeeded. Okay, so we're good here. Now we have the, the uh, directory. There's that round configuration. We can tune some user session timeout settings, um, but we're gonna move on to user download. And we're only gonna grab a particular set of users that we're, we are interested in. In our case, uh, this is going to be used for VPN. So uh, we're gonna grab specific users from IT, HR, and sales. And we're actually just grabbing the groups here. Uh, and we're saying we want to include them. We'll save this out. When we do this, one of the biggest things that you wanna do is make sure that you actually enable the realm. And it's just this little switch here. And we're just forced to download of the users and groups. And if we have success, we should see three users and three groups, and there we are. So there, the realm's created. Now we can go back and select that. And again, this is a, a plain vanilla configuration, right? Yes, there's NAT and, and uh, you know IP addressing, etc. But for the most part, it's fairly uh, a clean vanilla deployment. Um, so here we'll create the address pool. And in this case, we're going to use 172.16.16.0 slash 24. And we're just going to pick a range in there from 1 .1 to .100. We'll save that out. We'll grab it and we'll use that pool. Say OK. Here we can also modify uh, the group policy. So. Uh, in my case, I'll do it just to show you that uh, what are some of the settings in it instead of using the default. So you can see some of the protocols we can use, IPsec, SSL, for example. Here we can add a banner, and I'll do this just so we can see this when we connect uh, through the VPN, that they do get a uh, splash page that comes up that uh, lets you know that uh, only authorized users should be connecting. Um, here we'll set the primary uh, DNS server. In my case, it's going to be the Active Directory um, server that's um, on the network. We can also do split tunneling. We could uh, configure a, a profile, so specific settings for the client. Um, you see SSL settings and some connection settings. So lots of different tweaks that we can do here. Um, and then we can jump into advanced and then we've got a couple filters here that we could apply. Uh, again, additional things like access hours in regards to 
connecting the uh, simultaneous logins, for example, as well. Here we'll add the image. So, so when a user connects for the very first time, they're going to go to a web page on a Firepower Threat Defense. Um, that web page will automatically deploy the agent to the user and connect them to the VPN. Um, so we'll give this a name, or actually we'll actually select it. We'll just use the name from the image itself. Um, that way uh, you know exactly what version of uh, software it is. Um, it just makes it easier, but you can obviously name it what you want. So we can add additional agents here as well, and I'm just using Windows. So incoming interface is going to be the outside interface and certificate enrollment. So I don't have a certificate. Again, I can pivot and uh, create that. I'm going to use a self-signed certificate. So I will get a certificate error warning. Um, but in this case, it's a lab environment. Um, I most likely will do one with uh, uh, Microsoft Cert uh, root CA and, and go through that process um, in a later video. And I've done that with previous AnyConnect uh, and ASA, Cisco ASA and AnyConnect uh, uh, videos in the past. So we've got our self-signed certificate. Now the big thing in all of this, once we get this added here, we have to add it to the device. I'm going to show you a couple errors that you're going to get uh, if you don't do that. So we'll hit next here. We get a nice summary page of all that we've done. We've got a couple reminders on the right here of things that we need to make sure that we have done. The network interface object is okay in this case because it's already created, but the device certificate needs to be deployed um, to the device. So we're going to walk through a couple of the settings here just to um, close the loop on some of the things that you can do. You can see now that we, we've got a couple of settings here uh, in regards to ports, etc. that we could tweak. And then again, we've got advanced settings. Um, we're not going to change any of this. I just want to show you some of the capabilities of the uh, platform as it sits in 622. Um, so you can see, you know, certificate map and anybody that knows ASA uh, and any connect on that platform, you're seeing a lot of the same uh, things that you are fami very familiar with. Now we're going to go ahead and deploy it. We're going to get two errors and the two errors are going to be that device certificate has not been pushed to the device itself, um, but as well as we're going to get a license error. So here you can see um, it tells you exactly what you need to do, right? You need to go to device certificate and, and ultimately push that uh, device certificate to the next gen firewall. Um, and, uh, and then obviously license the platform. So let's go to certificates. And what we'll do is add certificate and we will grab the device of in question, which happens to be FTD1 and there's the certificate we hit add uh, and we're good from that perspective the next step in this would be that we would go in and apply the licenses uh, for any connect all right so let's go to device management and we will select the ftd1 device and then from here, we will go to device. Then we will click edit on the licensing and we will make sure that we apply the appropriate license. In this case, I'm going to use Apex and Plus um, and, uh, and, and, and say, save that out. And, and so now we're good from a license perspective. So now we should be able to push the, the configuration itself without having any errors. Click deploy, and this will work away and push the configuration to the device. But first and foremost, that it, it, depending on your configuration, most likely you have NAT enabled. So you're going to have to do uh, no NAT, um, in, in ensuring that anything from the inside going to the VPN client is not NATed. Um, so we'll do that here. And then the next thing we're going to have to also do is configure uh, an access policy. But we'll get that we'll get to that in a moment. So we're going to we're going to put this right at the top here. Um, and so it's inside, right? That inside network is the source to the outside. So anything from 
the inside VLAN, in this case 188, right? Translate that to itself, so no translation here. And then the original or the original destination is going to be the remote access VPN um, range. Now I don't have that object created, and like I've done in the remote access VPN, I'm able to pivot very quickly and create that uh, object. Um, so we'll do that here. We'll just give it a name that's useful: remote access VPN net, and we'll give it the uh, range here. We'll save it out and now we'll, we'll be able to select it from the list. And we're going to translate that to itself, so no translation, right? And we'll say OK. And that's at the top, and that looks good. All right, so we'll save this. And then our next step in the process would be to ensure that we have an access policy in place. Because we do have multiple outside to inside uh, uh, ACLs currently in play, um, we're going to create one and we're going to put this again at the top. And, and, and this one's, it, it's a little interesting in the sense that some people may make mistakes on where the traffic's coming from. So it is the outside to the inside, okay? And when we go in and, and configure the networks, we're actually gonna uh, use the remote access VPN object that we just created. So outside to inside from a zone perspective, the network, the source network is actually gonna be the remote access VPN uh, object, right? So that 172.16.16.0. .16, uh, uh, and then that's gonna go to the inside uh, uh, address and we get we, we our network and we can go through here and put users applications like there could be additional controls that we could put in place here um, in this case I'm letting everything in um, and I'm gonna move this to the top and we can save that out now we're gonna push this policy so the remote access VPN policy that we pushed earlier is already pushed and deployed to the device um, I could have done all of this in the same uh, sequence and pushed it at a, a single time. In this case, I, I, I did it in steps, um, but uh, you can do it however you feel fit. So we'll go to the analysis and users, and what we're going to see is once we connect, um, if everything's working properly, um, we should get a... Uh, the HR one user connected. So let's um, that's deploying, but that that's okay because what's deploying there is that NAT and the um, ACL. So we can still connect while that's being pushed out. The, the the only issue we could have is connectivity, but that'll be sorted out just as as we get connected here. So I'm just making sure I can ping the uh, the interface on the outside of Firepower Threat Defense. Um, so where I'm connecting to from a VPN perspective. And again, this, this is a clean vanilla workstation. As a user, I would connect to a, a URL that um, I was provided and everything else is done magically at this point in time. Now, if you weren't using a cell sign certificate, you wouldn't get that error. User logs in, nice little web page here, and then uh, clicks log in, and this is where the magic uh, happens, right? There's that little banner page. Great, and it's automatically deploying the client. Now, in my case, you're gonna get a message that um, states the certificate warning, and that, again, is because of that self-signed certificate. And it's, it's deploying um, the agent and, and as well as the diagnostic tools are also going to get deployed here. Um, and this is going to take a, a few uh, seconds, yeah, up to a minute, right, to, to push it out. It, it's not very long, um, but, um, but this will get pushed out. When, it, when it's finished installing, it'll automatically connect the VPN. So it's not like the user now has to go back in and launch the agent, uh, the VPN agent to connect. It'll automatically do that. 
So now it's doing the diagnostic portion of it. And this is always helpful when troubleshooting, uh, the users can come in and, and uh, use that tool. I have other videos around on the ASA side that show uh, the Dart tool in action. So, you know, feel free to browse that video. Um, it would most likely be in either the playlist ASA or playlist AnyConnect. Um, so now you can see we're connected. So fantastic, right? We went through very clean installation, works right out of the gate, no magic, right? Um, just follow the bouncy ball basically. And here we can see some statistics, right? In, in regards to the connection. Uh, this is that block connection for untrusted servers. That's because that certificate. We can see the route details as any network and a little bit around message history here. Um, so that, that's good. So everything's working as expected. Now when we refresh this, we should be able to see that HR user logged in. And we do. So, and we can see authentication type as VPN authentication. I can also come in here and log the user out. So if I move quick enough here, we should be able to see the user get logged out. Uh, there it is already. And a little message comes up and says that you've been uh, reset. And I'll quickly connect again. And this time you notice I'm not using the web browser, right? I, I use the agent itself. So let me close out a couple windows here to, to clean it up a bit. Let me get rid of this one as well. All right, so now I'm gonna ping an inside host. So we, we're VPN, we're connected. I just wanna make sure that we do have connectivity uh, to the inside network. And perfect. We can see that work. Let me just ping it again. That request timed out for the first one and then uh, everything else went through. We'll do a quick ping here. Fantastic. All right, so that's good. Everything's working. We, we were able to look at the user logged in on Firepower Management Center. We were able to log them out. Um, you know, it was a one-time configuration, right? Right from scratch um, under, you know, 15 minutes. Um, I'm gonna quickly connect to the administrative drive on the inside host, uh, just to be sure everything's working. Uh, that looks all good. Um, so maybe the next step we'll do is let's uh, open up a putty session here that I already have established and we'll just look at um, some of the settings. So VPN session DB and we're going to look at any connect. And in here, there's lots of good information, right? Uh, talks about the, um, you know, the, the user, the IPs. Right, fairly self-explanatory. Some of the pro protocols in play, um, you know, the login time, etc. So some good information. You could also append detail to this to get more information if you want to. Again, another easy deployment. 